If you just purchased the DJI Action 2 and you want to get a little bit more fine-tuned control over the exposure settings, either for video or photo, ND filters are what you're going to need. And Freewell just released their ND filter packs for the Action 2. So today we're going to take a look at what the different packs include and why you might need one pack over the other or different things for different reasons. <laughs> Hey, my name is Jake and I create content for solo creators on the go. Today we're looking at the Freewell filter packs for the Action 2. Freewell did send these to me, but while they sent these to me, they don't get any input on in this video. They're not paying for this video or anything like that. And I have to say that personally, I purchased a lot of Freewell filters because I really like the quality of the glass. I like the quality of the ND filters. And so whether or not they send me filters for a camera, I generally end up buying a set for the camera or the lens that I'm using anyway. So Freewell released a couple of different packs, but you can also buy the filter individually and there are some individual filters that you might want to purchase depending on how you want to use your action too. You have the standard day pack which comes with an ND8, 16, 32 and a circular polarized filter and then you have the bright day pack which comes with an ND8, ND16, ND32 and ND64 combination circular polarized and ND filter and this pack is going to be especially useful if you shoot around water a lot or on snow or on light sandy beaches in full sun because you're going to use that ND64 and the polarization option uh, when you're shooting in conditions like that. But then they also sell individual filters. And this here is their ND1000, which is a very long exposure filter. And it gives you the ability to capture shots like this when you want the water to be flowing and you want things to be in motion, anything in motion to be really blurred out. That's what the ND1000 or those long exposure filters are for. So if you only need one or two filters, you can buy individual filters. Or if you need a specialized filter like the ND1000, you can purchase it as well. Now the nice thing about these filters and the Action 2 is because the Action 2 is magnetic, the camera is magnetic, you can just simply clip them on like that and they attach magnetically. Now the one downside is that these are not super strong magnets, so I wouldn't recommend using these if you use this camera for things like FPV flying. Uh, I don't feel like this; these would be strong enough. You'd need to tape them in a little bit, or if you use a 3D printed case, then make sure that case can actually clip in with the ND filters. But the nice thing about them being magnetic is you can swap them out quickly, and you can even stack them, although I don't know why you would, but if you wanted to, you could stack, say, your circular polarized filter over your ND filter, or if you're in an insanely bright situation and you needed to add an ND8 and an ND16 together to get a higher ND value, you could also do that. It does seem like it adds a little bit of vignetting around the edges though, so you'd be careful what you do with that. But yeah, that's how they attach. No vignetting when it's just a single filter being on the camera. There's a few reasons I really like Freewell's ND filters specifically is I've abused mine like crazy over the last few years that I've had them and they are still going strong. I'm, they've dropped, they've been dropped into sand and I've wiped them off and kept going. They don't scratch easily and the color shift is absolutely minimal as far as anything that I need. If you set your white balance properly with the filter on, you're gonna come out with great accurate looking colors all the way across the board. Now there are a couple of different reasons you might consider the bright day pack over the standard day pack or the standard day pack over the bright day pack and I want to jump into them. Mainly the standard day pack I would consider if you mostly just shoot video with this and if you're not operating in bright bright sunlit so locations like on a snow field in bright sunlight then the standard day pack will be great. The main reason you want sh ND filters for when you're filming video is our eyes are accustomed to seeing a normal, a certain amount of motion blur. If you hold your hand in front of your face and look through your fingers or look at your fingers as you're doing this, your eyes will see your fingers blur together. We want to match that with video. And the way to do that is to double your frame rate with your shutter speed. So if you're shooting at 4K 60, you want your shutter speed to be 1 over 120. If you're filming at 4K 30, you want it to be 1 over 160. If you're filming at 24, you want it to be 1 over 48 or 50, depending on the camera. Most of them just have 50. But that matches closely to the motion blur that our eyes and our brains expect to see. Without that, you get kind of jittery, stuttery looking footage because you're seeing not enough motion blur in the actual video. But if you do shoot in brighter locations, like on a lot of open water in sun, in tropical locations, on white sandy beaches, or in my case, in white snowy locations, which are most definitely not tropical, then you want to look at something like the CPL filters, which are a combination ND filter and circular polarizer. And the reason for that is twofold. One, you can get an ND64, which is useful in bright sun on a bright situation, but also circular polarized filters are used for, for 
for controlling how much reflection comes off of a reflective surface like water or like leaves. So you can control how much blues and greens you see in the sky and in the leaves around you. You can get a more saturated look, which gives it a little more vibrant look if you want to. But also if you don't want to see a lot of shine on water, then you can use a circular polarizer to control that shine. And the way it works is pretty simple. You put it on your camera just like you would a regular ND filter and then you rotate this. And as you rotate it around, you will see the amount of shine or the reflections on the water disappear. Now that's useful for photography if you want to add more saturation into the water if you're shooting on a blue mountain lake or something like that. Or if you want to see what's beneath the water a little bit, you can use polarizers to also get a little bit more information about what's beneath the water. But that's a lot of the reasons you'd want to use polarizers is if you're shooting around a lot of reflective surfaces and you want to be able to control the amount of reflections seen by the camera, then you need a polarizer or circular polarized end to ND filters. As I said, you can buy each of these packs individually, or you can buy individual filters from Freewell as well. There are links in the description. If you want to see other accessories that work really well for action cameras, click or tap right here. I put together a small playlist. I'll see you in one of those videos. As always, if you have questions, ask me in the comments below or join my live stream on Wednesday night from 4 p.m. Alaska time or 8 p.m. Eastern. I'll see you again soon in the next video. Cheers.